Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hi friends, make sure that you subscribe and you like this video and also press the bell because the bell will let you know when a new video comes out. If you love Heidi, Cherry and Vea, make sure that you go to the link below and you join the patron group. Then you'll be part of the cat club and you'll get three exclusive stories every month for just $7 a month. I hope you enjoy the meditation. I love you. Bye. Are you ready to meditate with Corey? Make sure that you jump into your bed and you get all comfortable and snuggly. Check that the light is just right and everything is perfect so that you can relax your body and let go of your busy day. It was Noah's birthday. He was 10. 10 and he had the most awesome birthday party planned out. His best friends, Sawyer, Taiwan, and Max, were all there. His pets were there. Troy, his cat, Everest, his dog, Sienna, his other cat, and Sky, his other dog, including Tucker and Leo. And to finish it all off, Heidi, Cherry and Vea had managed to come too. He was like over the moon happy. He had a bouncy castle and he'd envisioned at one point that he would get all of the cats, all of the dogs and his three best friends all in the bouncy castle all at the same time. How fun was that going to be? It was like the most enormous bouncy castle ever. It would definitely get everyone in. Leo was already worried. He was talking to Heidi about maybe possibly coming out in hives because he wasn't sure whether he'd be allergic to the rubber of the bouncy castle. Heidi said, I think if you don't stay in there for too long, you'd probably be all right. And maybe they kind of take that into account and maybe... The companies that make bouncy houses and bouncy castles, they probably think about being really careful of what kind of materials to use because they don't want kids and stuff getting allergic reactions. This made Leo feel a lot better. But then he started to get concerned about bouncing. Would that make him vomit? Heidi just kind of put her arm around Leo's shoulder and said, don't worry, Leo, I'm sure it'll be fine. Everest and Skye, Noah's two dogs, were hanging out with Tucker. Tucker was showing them how he'd discovered if he ran around in circles fast enough, he could bite his own tail. Of course, Everest and Skye, being girl dogs, were already much smarter than Tucker. And they knew that you could do that, but they were pretending just for Tucker's sake, that they'd discovered something new from Tucker. He was chasing it around and around and he kept saying, Oh, look at me, look at me, I'm so smart. I didn't know, right? I didn't know for the longest time that I could, I could actually chase my own tail. I mean, I'm so, I'm so like, I'm so never going to be alone again because I just turn around and there's my tail and it's like a best friend to run after and chase. And I'm like, oh, this is so awesome. Everest and Sky were just kind of nodding at Tucker because Tucker's kind of super cute. So they were just putting up with him because they thought he was super cute. But, you know, really, they were far too intelligent for Tucker. And then Troy and Sienna, the cats, were hanging out with Cherry and Vea. Vea had got on the most beautiful birthday princess dress. It was lilac and it was sparkly from head to toe. Sienna said that she wished she had a dress just like that, and Vea said, 
Well, you know, since we're at your house, if you want to go upstairs, we can get changed. And you can wear this dress and I'll wear something of yours. Sienna was very excited about this. So they instantly just ran upstairs to get changed and play dress up, leaving Troy with Cherry. Troy was just the perfect thing for Cherry because Cherry and Troy were talking about how excited they were about bouncing. OMG, this is like my favourite part apart from cake. Cake, right? Or like, you know, cupcakes. Or like ice cream cake. Or like upside down cake. Any kind of cake, really, is normally the bestest part of a birthday. But bouncy houses, bouncy castles, they're like the bomb. They're like the bestest thing ever. I can't wait. I mean, I think we should go in now, Troy. Troy said, yeah, let's do it. Let's just go in now. Tucker stopped chasing his tail. I'm up. I'm up for the bouncy castle. I've been waiting all morning for this bouncy castle. I want to get in now. So that meant Troy, Cherry and Tucker were all already bouncing in the bouncy castle. Taiwan and Max, Sawyer and Noah all jumped in the bouncy castle. And then finally, Vea and Sienna came downstairs and they went in the bouncy castle. And then... All that was left was Leo and Everest and Heidi. Everest decided to be Leo's companion. She felt sorry for him. So she told him she would stay with him and bounce with him near the opening of the bouncy castle, just in case Leo needed to boke and be sick. This made Leo feel a lot better. But eventually, they were all in there. Noah's birthday wish was coming true. All the cats... All the dogs and the kids were all bouncing in the bouncy house. It was awesome. And then, after about five minutes, they were all still having a lot of fun. Nothing was changing. Everything was going really good inside of the bouncy house. But Noah was staring out of, like, the mesh windows. And he realized that he couldn't see his house through the window anymore. And it wasn't as if it got all tumbled around and dizzy and upside down. He was looking through the mesh window that he was originally looking through because he remembered looking through the window, seeing the kitchen window, wondering what time they were going to eat cake. So he knows that the window that he was looking out of originally was supposed to be looking at the kitchen window. But it wasn't anymore. So then he questioned himself and he thought, Maybe I have got dizzy, and maybe I'm all upside down, and maybe something's not right. So Noah, not saying anything to anybody, bounced his way around the entire bouncy house from the inside, checking all the windows. What he discovered was quite unnerving. There wasn't anything that he could see out of the mesh windows, the three big mesh windows, and then the part that opened where you climbed in and you climbed out. All he could see was sky. Noah rubbed his eyes. This whole time he was still bouncing. He rubbed his face and rubbed his eyes and looked out of the mesh windows. Again, all he could see was sky. He started to get a little bit freaked out and he stopped bouncing. And then Taiwan and Max were stood next to him bouncing and they noticed that Noah had stopped bouncing and they stopped bouncing and they said, are you okay, Noah? And Noah said, I'm not sure. Tell me what you see out of the windows. Taiwan and Max looked out of the windows and they both said at the same time, the exact same time, sky. But they didn't think anything of it. They'd not notice what was outside of the windows before they even got in the bouncy house, so it didn't really register with them. Then Noah shouted over everyone to stop bouncing. Leo grabbed a hold of Everest and said, Oh gosh, thank gosh for that. I really did think I was just about to boke. Everest wasn't paying attention to Leo. She was listening to Noah. And because she was Noah's dog, 
she could tell Noah's voice sounded different. He sounded serious. He sounded like something wasn't right. Everyone stopped bouncing as much as they could, which was quite difficult because you know when you go in a bouncy house, you kind of slide all over the place. And then Noah said to everyone, "Everyone, go to your closest window and look out of the window." No one really thought anything. They all just did what Noah said. They all turned around and looked at Noah, and Noah stood there with his serious face, looking at all of his friends, and the dogs and the cats, and they all pulled the same face at each other. And then Cherry said what everyone was thinking. Omg! Omg! What's happening? Where are we? We're flying. Leo instantly laid down on the ground, put one of his paws up on his forehead, and said, "I think I'm going to die. Oh, I don't like this. This is awful." Tucker noticed that Leo wasn't feeling good, and he went bounding over to Leo because he was his best friend. He was his brother, and he said, "Don't worry, Leo. It's okay." It's like a magic carpet, Leo. It's so much fun. Don't worry. I'm sure everything is fine. I'm sure it's just something that this particular bouncy house does. You know, I've heard that some bouncy houses do fly. You know. Everyone looked at Tucker and said, "When did you hear that?" And Tucker said, "Well, I didn't actually. I'm just making it up to make Leo feel better. I'm sorry, Leo. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lie to you. Well, I wasn't really lying. It was like a white lie, like like a nice lie, like a fluffy marshmallow lie. It didn't mean anything bad. It was just that Leo's panicky, panicking. Leo's panicking, guys, and and we need to just like help Leo." Leo, don't have a panic attack, okay? Leo, everything is fine. We're just honestly, this is going to be so much fun. It really is like a like a, like a magic carpet. Cherry came over and Cherry said, "Omg, Leo, this is the best thing ever. Just wait till we get back down to the ground, right? And we tell everyone what happened. It's like it's like so awesome, Leo. Don't worry, Leo. This is just like the best." Cherry was freaking out inside, but she was pretending also for Leo that this wasn't any big deal. The fact that the whole bouncy house had somehow just lifted off the ground, left Noah's back garden, and started to rise up to the sky, and now it was flying, gosh knows where, with all of them inside. Noah. Had the right mind to actually put the zipper down on the opening of the bouncy house because he didn't want anyone falling out. And then, Heidi, the very calm, smart one of the group, said, "Maybe your mum actually hired a bouncy house that could do this, Noah, and it's a surprise. And maybe we should just all enjoy it." Noah had not thought of that. His mum. Might have surprised him with a bouncy house that flies. I mean, how cool is my mum? He thought to himself. And then he started to loosen up. Then he was like, "High fives, everyone! I have a bouncy house that flies." Omg! Cherry said, "Too right, brother." Omg! And she parfisted him. Then everyone started to chill out a little bit, except for Leo, who was still laid on the ground with his paw on his forehead, as if he was just dying moment by moment. But it's okay; people were used to Leo doing that kind of thing. If it's not him being stressed, it's an allergic reaction to something, so it was okay. And Everest was taking care of him; she was staying close by. So everyone else in the group decided to have a really good time. They were bouncing all over the place, and there was something really cool about a bouncy house. That flies through the sky. The motion of flying and bouncing made them feel like they were flying themselves. It was pretty darn awesome. Then Noah had an idea. I wonder if he can kind of tell this thing to go to certain places. Cherry said, "Omg, like, like where?" You know what? Oh, you know, I was talking to Sawyer earlier, and we were t- 
talking about Disneyland, right? And I was saying, I don't think I've ever been to Disneyland. And Sawyer was saying, oh, no, I don't believe it. And I was saying, yeah, Sawyer, Sawyer, yeah, I've never been to Disneyland. And Sawyer was like, no, I don't believe it. And I was like, Sawyer, are you being rude? Just believe me. I'm telling you, I've never been to Disneyland. <gasps> Nowhere. What if we could fly to Disneyland right now, all of us together? Noah went over to where the door was, where the zipper was, and he looked at the side, and there was a panel on the side of the bouncy castle, like a panel that you would find when you're going in an elevator, and it had buttons on it. He pressed all sorts of different buttons, and nothing seemed to happen. But then there was one big red button. Leo saw his finger slowly moving towards the red button. Red buttons normally mean something bad. That's what Leo thought. Leo said, oh, please don't press the red button. Noah pressed the red button. And this voice came out of nowhere and it said, Hello, how can I help you? Everyone again stopped bouncing. They all kind of gathered round this panel on the side of the bouncy house wall. Noah said, well, it's my birthday and I would like to visit Disneyland. And the voice just said, Yes, of course. Anything you ask for. And then the light went back out and then the bouncy house speeded up and started going like really fast to the point where everyone flew to the sides of the walls like as if gravity was just pushing them to the sides of the bouncy house. Which was like a ride in itself. They were all cheering and, yes, this is so awesome. It was like the best thing ever. Like they were all on one of those speed rides where gravity just pushes you and it like makes your mouth open and you're slavering all over the place and everyone was slavering all over the place and Cherry was laughing so hard she almost pee her pants and then she said, I'm going to pee my pants and then Tucker said, oh, please don't because you'll pee on me <laughs> and then everyone started laughing about Cherry possibly peeing on everyone because the gravity would have just flew pee all over the bouncy house and that would have been absolutely horrendous. Oh, but then, just like that, the bouncy house stopped, still, like dead still. And the voice came back and said, you are at your destination. A ladder has been dispatched. Everyone went over to the zipper on the door and Noah opened it. There was a ladder there, a big ladder that he, it just seemed to go on for as long as he could see. But if he squinted his eyes, he could see that there was like green land or something down below. Tucker said, I can go first if you like. I don't mind, I'm really good on ladders. You know, I don't know about Leo, because Leo's not even good on wooden floors. He just like slides all over the place. But you know, Leo, you can you can be next and I can keep a hold of you and, and, and we'll be all fine. And Leo just looked white. But there was no way he was going to stay in the bouncy house on his own. They all went down the ladder. And when they landed, they were directly outside of Space Mountain. Space Mountain! Space Mountain! Sawyer and Taiwan and Noah and Max all started jumping around and, and bashing each other's tummies into each other's like, yeah! Like they were doing some kind of marsh dance or something like, yeah, Space Mountain, yeah! Disneyland was empty. No one was there. Not even the crickets were cricketing. Not even like, <coughs> sounds in the background. Nothing deadly quiet, like it was a ghost town. Which meant there was no lines. No lines at Disneyland. They were all so excited, except for Leo, who was at the back of the crowd, just kind of pretending to be running with everyone, enjoying themselves. They ran through all of the different tunnels, down the different paths, all the way to get to the Space Mountain ride. And then they all got on the Space Mountain train. And then they all rode Space Mountain. No lines. Everything was just the best. Who doesn't love space? 
Who doesn't love outer space? And then Tucker, because Tucker had never been to Disneyland and Cherry had never been to Disneyland and Leo had never been to Disneyland. Heidi had gone a long time ago. Freya had never been to Disneyland. None of Noah's animals had been to Disneyland. So, so many animals that were new to Disneyland. But who doesn't like space? Tucker was sat with Cherry on the ride and Leo was sat with Everest behind them. And Tucker kept shouting out loud at the top of his lungs. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. This is so much fun. I wonder if the bouncy castle will take us to space. Are we in space? This feels so much like space. I've never been to space. I'm so impressed. Oh, I feel like an astronaut. Cherry said, OMG. I always knew I'd be so good in space. I knew I could be an astronaut, you know. When you think about astronauts, you always think of men, don't you? You think men are going to be astronauts. But, you know, I think women. Women, so good at being astronauts. You know why? Because we're just good flyers. Uh, well, you know, well, I know that I'm a good flyer. I'm so good at everything. I'm like, oh, God, I knew it. I just knew I'd be good at being an astronaut. Leo was praying. His little paw was doing the cross over his, his face. Even though he wasn't religious, he just was like, oh, he needed help from a, an outside source. He was so, so stressed. But everyone else was having such a good time. There were so many places to go, they didn't stay at Disneyland. They figured if they were going to be in a bouncy castle that was kind of like a flying carpet that would take them anywhere in the world, why would they waste all day in one place? So they all climbed the ladder and got back in the bouncy castle. Now one of the things that Noah loves is soccer. He loves it. And if you like soccer, where would you go in the world? Where would be the best place to go in the world? Do you know? Noah pressed the red button and the voice said, Yes, can I help you? Noah said, Can you take us to Wembley Stadium, please? And the voice said, Yes, buckle up. Everyone knew what the voice was talking about straight away. They knew they were going to be blasted to the sides of the bouncy house again. So they all just like ran to the sides of the bouncy house and waited. And then the bouncy house just went forward like full-blown speed, like, like light, light, light speed. That fast, like so fast. To Wembley. In London. In England. Wembley. Wembley. When they got there, the light came back on the button and it said, You have reached your destination. The ladder has been deployed. You may now exit the bouncy house. They all went down the ladder super fast. Noah especially was really excited about going to Wembley. Just to be on the pitch. That pitch. That size. Wembley can hold 90,000 people. Can you imagine? When they got there, it was 90,000 seats full. There was an electricity in the air. The noise just from people chittering and chattering. There was screams and laughters and cheers, clapping. There was so much noise. It was crazy how loud it was. Leo was shaking in his boots. And Tucker kept saying, it's okay, Leo. It's okay. This is so cool. They found themselves... All of them just stood in the middle of an empty football pitch. Like they were the entertainment. They were what everyone was there cheering for. Cherry said, OMG! <gasps> I've been here so many times in my dreams. I've been here so many times. Oh, I can feel them all clapping for me, cheering for me. They're all like, Cherry! Cherry, Cherry, instead of like, I don't know, England, England, England. Can you hear him? She put a little pause up to her ears. Cherry, Cherry, Cherry. Oh my gosh, I'm so famous, so famous. 
Tucker was right there next to her going, Cherry! Cherry! As if that was the best thing ever. Noah, Sawyer, Taiwan and Max started running around the pitch like that's what they were there for. Like the whole crowd of people was just cheering them on playing soccer. They'd made it to Wembley. They were like soccer professionals. It was the best ever. Can you imagine if you liked soccer and then you found yourself in the Wembley Stadium and there was 90,000 strong all cheering for you as if you were like this famous soccer person? That's what it was like. Noah didn't want to leave. It was the best feeling in the world. This was the best birthday ever. He couldn't wait to thank his mum for the flying bouncy house. Eventually, though, they did climb the ladder. And then, as if it was magic, the bouncy house took them home. And then, as if it was magic again, the bouncy house was back on the back garden. Noah could see the window through the window. And he knew that the ride was done. The magic was gone. And they were back home, safe and secure, on his back garden. Leo was the first one out of there. But then everyone else got out. Noah ran over to his mum and said, That is the best bouncy house ever! His mum thought that was kind of a bit of an over-exaggeration for the fact that it was just a bouncy house because he looked so happy, like so happy, like so excited. But she didn't say anything. She just thought he was being really grateful. But that's it, Noah didn't tell her anything else. In a way, it was kind of like so special, he didn't want to tell anyone. In case it didn't really happen, and then he would feel all sad. So instead, he just took everyone to where the cake was, and everyone had cake. And then eventually, everyone went home. And then eventually, it was just Noah, brushing his teeth, putting on his pajamas, and getting ready to go to bed. After having the most amazing birthday ever. The end.